Hi, welcome to my YouTube. Today I'm going to do a comparison of these VZ61s. It was designed in Czechoslovakia and adopted, as the name implies, in 1961. These are neat little guns, originally an SMG, small enough to wear as a sidearm, fires from a close bolt, and uses a straight blowback system. The advantage of that is less wear, but due to its size and weight, the disadvantage is the high rate of fire. One pull of the trigger and most of the 20 rounds in the mag would be spent. But the Czechoslovakian has designed a rate reducer, an ingenious system to slow the rate down to a manageable 850 rounds per minute. There are three calibers, a 22, a 32 ACP, and 380. I don't have the 22. At first glance, it's hard to tell them apart. You're going to say, no, no, this is the 32 because it has curved mag, and this is the 38 because it has straight mag. Well, you would be wrong because I swapped the mags. The mags fit each other, but they don't work well with each other. So if you're thinking of putting 632 into a 380 mag, I would say don't bother because you can tell the rounds don't sit well in a 380 mag. There are subtle differences on the outside because they are manufactured by different companies in different countries. This 32 is manufactured by Zastava in Serbia under contract. This VZ61 is also called M84. It comes with a manual, cleaning kit, leather holster, one 10 round steel mag, two 20 round steel mags, and one leather mag pouch. While this 380 is manufactured by CSA in Czech Republic, it comes with a cleaning brush, two 20 round plastic mags and a manual and it's shipped in this plastic uh, case. Let's start from the outside and work away inside. The subtle difference on the outside are the selector and the folding stock. The selector for the Zastava, safety is towards the front and the CSA safety is towards the back. And of course, to fire, for the CSA you move the selector to the front and to fire the Zastava you move the selector to the back. Now with the uh, folding stock, to remove the CSA folding stock, it's not easy you have to remove this folder from the mount to get at two screws that's inside below the inside this and it's bolted to the frame not easy while the Zastava you unfold it partly not all the way like this and press the pin in the back and slide it to the left. There it is. Very simple. And of course to put it back in, it slides along the dovetail, but make sure that the folder is not open all the way. Depress the pin and slide it to the right. Very simple, very easy. To save time, I have disassembled both of the guns and the first thing that pops out at me is the CSA rear receiver looks unfinished. I can see their point, there's no point of wasting any more money milling out for a rate reducer when this gun will never fire a full auto anyway. 
But the Zastava not only went so far as to mill out the rear of the receiver for a rate reducer, but also included pieces that simulate uh, a full auto. Here's the pivoting piece. You can hear it's driving the hammer down the grip. Here, I'll take it out, take it apart. This pivoting piece is missing an, a hook that comes out this direction. What that hook does is that it latches itself to the bolt. There's a recess in the bolt. It latches itself onto it for a split second. That split second is enough to reduce the rate from 1100 rounds per minute down to 850 rounds. And this pivoting arm at the same time pushes a hammer down the grip. And I'll show you what the hammer looks like. This is spring loaded, the base of the uh, grip. But also, when you remove the base, the grip also comes out. And here is the, the grip tube. Inside is a hammer. Now, the real hammer looks similar to this, but this is, there's another piece that slides along this hammer. So when it comes up, that piece acts an additional hammering of this pivoting piece. So this is what happens when the bolt strikes this part, it hooks onto it, this piece pivots and pushes this hammer down the grip and then it comes back up, it releases the pivot arm, releases the bolt and the bolt goes forward. Like I said, this is not quite exact on the, uh, the real submachine gun. So all that is to make you feel, okay, that you're firing a real machine gun. Although when I was firing it, I did not feel all that additional movement of this hammer and the pivoting arms. It doesn't actually hold on to the bolt. It just drives the hammer down, up and down. I did not feel it. So, so after a few rounds, I decided to just remove this piece and this piece just to save weight. This is quite heavy, by the way. So, if you're in the market for a VZ61 and you can't decide which one to pick, I would say, remember, these are just to punch holes in paper. So therefore, if you want something with a louder bang, more recoil, then of course the 380 is for you. But if you want something that's not, not much recoil, <clears throat> but closer to the real submachine gun, then this is as close as you're going to get. So, hope that helps you. Thank you for joining me and please subscribe.